oftentimes we'll look to external situations and external circumstances and point the finger at them and say, well, those are the reasons why I can't get ahead in life, why I'm so small, why I really can't get out there and be the success that deep down somewhere I know that I can be. This is part of the human condition and this is part of the ego mind creating stories around everything in your life. And those stories are what's keeping you small. I should say the belief in those stories are what's keeping you small. We're not going to stop our mind from overthinking. We're not going to stop our mind from trying to figure out the future and try to lay out a path of certainty when in reality we're needing to be immersed in a possibility of uncertainty. That's what allows magic to come forward. But the mind doesn't like that. The mind likes to have everything kind of predicted and laid out because it makes it makes you feel safe. And we all want to feel safe, right? We don't want to feel exposed. We don't want to feel insecure. We don't want to feel inferior. That's for sure. But when we look through our senses, when we look through our eyes, what our ears are telling us, we'll see certain situations or circumstances out there in other people's lives that our mind will start to create a story around. And the next thing we know, we're feeling insecure or inferior because we feel that our life is not measuring up to those that we're seeing around us. And social media is an amazing place for these stories to cultivate. We see so often so many people posting pictures of their lives, of their cars, of their houses, of their relationships that look absolutely amazing. Now, when you experience that, you see that or you hear these videos or reels or whatever it is you're listening to, your mind goes to work and starts to do something very, very interesting. It starts to take an inventory of your life and put it on a scale or compare it to what you're experiencing or what you're seeing in other people's lives. And it creates a story. But the interesting thing is it creates a story from an infinitely tiny fractal of the information that is truthful. It's only going by what it is experiencing or seeing being presented to it. That is so important. Only what it can perceive and that comes through as these amazing photos, people on vacations, people with buying bigger houses, better cars, more expensive stuff, whatever that looks like for you, the mind instantly tries to create some sort of a of a, a status ladder and it puts you in it in relationship to those who are around you, those you who you're experiencing in this example, social media. It doesn't have to be through social media. It could be family or friends or things that you're seeing externally from others, your mind will go and try to place you on a level that is either inferior or superior to others that you're experiencing in reality. And when we do this, we give our mind so much power to create an avatar version of us that really shrinks us down into such a small piece or aspect of our pure potential. When we're looking at this stuff, we use social media as an example. We don't know the stories behind it. We don't know the realities behind it. We don't know the truth behind it. People by nature always want to put their best foot forward. They want to they want to make their lives look completely amazing, optimistic outlook. They're living the best life possible. And that's the information that we're flooded with. That's the information that we receive. So instantly we go to compare our lives as we see it. And we know what's happening in our lives. In fact, we know the best about what's happening in our lives. But yet we start to judge ourselves based on this false facade or reflection that we're experiencing through our five senses. We don't know what's at the heart of the matter in these people life, people's lives. Somebody go out, buy a big house, get a gigantic mortgage. They're one layoff away from bankruptcy. Okay. Same thing with a car relationship. You don't know how happy people truly are or fulfilled they truly are based on what you're seeing them project forward in their posts 
or when you're out for dinner with them, going out to the movies with them, in social events, whatever it is. It's human nature to project your best life, to make your life look absolutely amazing, better than it truly is. And oftentimes there are underlying emotions there, emotions of being unfulfilled or being unhappy with the current circumstances that people are often hiding behind these false facades. They're not living up to their potential and they have a hole unfulfilled in their heart and they're not being authentic. So we can look at this as being a re direct reflection. They are energetically playing small, trying to project this bigness, but they're feeling small. And that's a reflection back to how we may feel in the moment when we see all of this amazing stuff on social media. They cause us to feel small. And that right there is the gold that we need to embrace and detach from what we're seeing in other people. We don't know the whole story. We don't know their whole truth. How many times have you uh, you know, known someone who seems like their marriage is absolutely perfect, just like the just the most amazing thing, or their relationship doesn't have to be a marriage, is absolutely perfect. And then the next thing you know, they're separated, they're divorced, they're no longer together. And you say to yourself, wow, they seemed so happy all the time. Okay, that is that false facade. And the thing is, our mind will start to put us in a situation and compare us and say, well, we're, we're not feeling as happy as them. Well, how come my relationship isn't as amazing as theirs. Well, we don't have the full story. We don't have all the information. We only have the information that we're being shown. And our ego will do the same thing. It will show us things in our reality to make us feel a certain way. And a lot of times that makes us feel small and disempowered and inauthentic. Because when we start to feel empowered and authentic and we heal from these limiting beliefs and we become unlimited, the ego doesn't feel safe because it gets back into that energy I talked about in the beginning of this video it, where the future is unpredictable. It can't lay out or see exactly how things are going to progress. And that is very scary from the perspective of the ego. That is a trauma response. That's why so many of us spend years playing it small until we face these limiting beliefs. We face this dense energy within us and we decide, we make a choice to do something about it and to change. And we start to play big. We start to get in tune with our higher self, our divine energy. We allow it to flow and we care less about what's happening in the reality as far as what other people are thinking about us, right? So we're not going to be the ones to be projecting any falsities or false beliefs or false facades to others. We're going to stand in our power and we're going to be authentic to ourselves and to those around us. This allows us to embrace the truth, the bigness, the wholeness of who we truly are and not allow our ego to shrink us. Sure, we're going to experience things that our ego is going to want to, again, try to put us on some sort of a status or comparison level with others. That's completely okay. That's what it does. But we don't want to attach to that. We want to know that the ego does not have the full story. The ego doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay? It's working with the data that it has, which is a very, very limited lower frequency bandwidth, usually sourced from traumas, dense energy, what we would term as negative experiences back sometime early in our life, could even go back to past lives, right? So this stuff is carried with us. So next time you find yourself um, comparing yourself to others based on information that you're receiving through your five senses, okay, seeing posts, hearing stories when you're out with somebody, whatever, keep in mind that human nature 
will usually want to put its best foot forward to be seen in the highest possible light. We live in a world of status, and that is such deep, entrenched programming that our default really is to try to impress others based on certain accomplishments or things that are going on in our lives. We want to put ourselves in the best possible light to really create envy, right? Isn't that really what it's all about? We want people, we have this need uh, to have people be envious of us. Okay, that makes us somehow feel better. And why does that happen? Because we don't feel empowered within here. We don't feel fulfilled. We don't have a loving, compassionate presence for ourselves. So we're looking for that validation, for that acceptance, for that pat on the back from others to make us feel better. And that's programming. That's the ego's way of saying I need something from you to make me feel better. And if you've been on this healing path for a long time, you've heard me say it over and over again, everything that we're looking for in terms of validation and acceptance needs to come from within. It starts here. And when that happens, it has no choice but to reflect back externally. Embrace your power. Embrace your truth. Detach from the stories that your mind is trying to tell you. Detach from the influences that others are trying to project to you. Don't judge yourself based on those fractal, infinite information that you're perceiving through those stories. You don't know what's happening behind the scenes, and you don't have to. Focus inside Find fulfillment, find love, find compassion. Find your strength, your authenticity, and your power within. And you won't need any of that validation externally in the future. If you have not downloaded my Heart Chakra Meditation, please do so below. Share this video if you know anyone that it can help. Subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button, that like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you.